All right, what up, guys? We are on class number four, build number five for the PTR builds guides. PTR comes out in like four days, I think. So I'm going to take a little bit of extra time with the Necromancer because I don't know anything about Necromancers. The only Necro I played was in season one as a Bone Spear Necro. I don't know anything about anything, especially if I'm trying to make like a specific thing with the uniques like we're doing with all the classes. So that one will take a little bit of time. Um, but anyway, this one is going to be Sorcerer, and of course it's Ball Lightning because we're doing the Uniques, and the Uniques are for Ball Lightning. Um, but yeah, let's just get into it. We have two and two Frostbolt. We have two points remaining, by the way, because uh, it doesn't really matter where you put these points. I guess it would be nice to put them here, right? But you don't need to. Um, maybe one here if you decide to go uh, Raven of the Infinite instead of the um, Shroud of False Death, which is what I have in there right now. Uh, Raymond is probably better for speeding, but I'm mean, trying to make this build for pit pushing, and pit pushing is going to require as much damage as possible. Um, yeah. Um, three into Elemental Dominance, one into Devastation, one point into Flame Shield. Uh, teleport over to Shimmering Teleport, Ice Armor down to Shimmering Ice Armor. We have three into Dampening Lair. Then we have one into Ice Blades, down over to Summon Ice Blades, of course. Three into Protection. Three into Conjuration Mastery. Mana Shield. Then we have Familiar down to Invoked Familiar. Coming down through here, we have all five into Ball Lightning, of course. Over to Wizard's Ball Lightning. One into Static Discharge, um, just to to make Crackling Energy to collect. It's not that we, we don't need it to get here, but we just have one there to create a little bit of Crackling Energy. And then Invigorating Conduit. Then we have three into Horfrost, Elemental Synergies, Evocation. One into coursing currents to get over to electrocution. Five unstable currents, and then we are doing enlightenment, which I know this is what people use now, but the fact that you can't gain stacks while stacks are going down makes me iffy about it. The 25% increased damage and the attack speed and the mana duration, that's good and all, but not being able to have it at all times or build up to it is kind of annoying. Part of me thinks that like overflowing energy is probably better for speeding since you can just collect or make your cooldowns go down. And then Veer's Mastery would be nice too. I don't know if you can still snapshot that. I doubt it. Let's go to gear. So we have Ice Blades as the enchantment, but we don't have it over here. And we're using Frostbolt here to try out something since um, with the new uh, patch, Season 7, you're not going to be able to use Firebolt to apply burning damage to enemies anymore. And then also uh, they're changing... What is it called? Devouring Blaze. They're not making Devouring Blaze is only going to work with pyromancy skills, so that sucks. Um, I get them changing the frost or the firebolt, but it'd been nice for them to keep the other thing because then you could use hex of flames or something to still use that. But whatever. Witchcraft wise, we have Breath of the Coven, which is the one. Let me scroll down here. Dealing damage or applying crowd control effect with any of your witchcraft effects increases your attack speed by X for 10 seconds, stacking once per unique witchcraft effect. All of your witchcraft effects are Eldritch, Psych, and Growth. And then at rank 8, you gain 40% lucky hit chance, while bonuses from all three are active at once. Um, so we do have one hex from each of them so that they have effects always going. We also have these for vulnerable damage. Um, Shaken Soul, which is the one that gives you vulnerable. This applies... Um, what is it? Uh, uh, scrolling up, scrolling up. It is release a wave of woe when damaging an enemy with your skills. Wave of woe deals an additional X shadow damage and echoes. Part doesn't matter. What matters is that wave of woe makes it where you're doing damage with it, and then shaken soul is going to apply vulnerable. Um, and then we have hex of flames, hex of shattering, and hex of whispers. All of these matter for the dust stone and the breath of the coven. And then occult gem wise, we have just scrolling down to the gems here. Elder Sigil, Elder Sigil, which will make it where our mastery skills deal 25% increased direct damage to hexed enemies. So they should always be hexed considering we have three. Um, and plus, all these hexes require lucky hit chance. I think I do know that Hex of Flames does. So um, this has a really low lucky hit chance. So the 40% we get from Breath of the Coven would be nice. Um, Killing Wind, while you have three or more Eldritch Witch Powers slotted, which we do, you gain 25% movement speed and 15% critical strike chance. The critical strike chance is what matters. And then we have the last one, which is Dust Stone. For each of your ores and hexes and enemies afflicted with, they take 4% increased damage from you. 
Also, we got to remember that these occult gems, each of them give armor and max life, or ma max life, um, armor and max resistance to all elements, so um, that will be easily covered. Um, let's go to aspects and uniques. We have air perdition on, of course. Then Shroud of False Death. Again, you can change that with Raiment of the Infinite to do like speed farming and stuff like that. We have Conceited on the gloves. That might change. I'm hoping we have enough cooldowns going to always have a barrier up to have this damage. Um, concussive Strikes on the Pants. If you're finding issues surviving, you can always change this to pretty much anything that you think you need that gives you damage reduction. Um, I think the current Ball Lightning uses the one that gives you damage reduction when you cast Ice Armor, something like that. Um, Aspect of the Orange Herald on the boots, just to make our cooldown go down. Oh, also on the pants, we have Armor, Max Life Intelligence, Chance to Freeze, Total Armor. Um, I kind of just glossed over the stuff on the gloves. Ranks to Core Skills, Attack Speed, Lucky Hit Chance to Restore Primary Resource, Shock, Critical Strike Damage, and Immobilize. Uh, that's actually supposed to be Chance to Immobilize. Let me change that real quick. Um... We don't want immobilized duration. We want chance to immobilize. I am fat fingering my keys. Um, to the boots though, we have ranks the ball lightning, movement speed, black ball lightning, movement speed, and chance to stun. If you want to have a more speed running build, if you do run Raymond of the Infinite, you're gonna want to change this to from movement speed to i can't remember what exactly this, this is the one that the current speed running uses but i do know that you do evade cooldown um sorry evade cooldown so that you can spam or teleport more because you use teleport as one of your enchantment slots um by the way we have the frost bolt here i just want to go over this i know we're kind of past this but this is to help with like always doing extra damage with hoarfrost always having enemies crowd controlled period because this will just always apply chill. You can change this if you want to. I've thought about changing it to uh, Chain Lightning and Mech and My Vulnerable come from the Paragon board. But I went against that for now, but that might change. But anyway, Storm Swell on the... Sorry, my kiddo just made a noise. <laughs> um, Storm Swell on the Wand, Intelligence, Max Life, and we put Vulnerable Damage. Because we're going to be using Shredding Blades up here, which is, takes your vulnerable damage and gives it a multiplicative. So I just want to stack mo as much vulnerable as possible so that the mul multiplicative actually does something. Um, it doesn't It doesn't matter because it's creating a bunch of extra flat damage. But it's still worth, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, though. Um, chance for Ball Lightning Projectiles to cast twice and then Shock Critical Strike damage. Uh, offhand is going to be the new Akun's Catalyst, and uh, Inherent is Ball Lightning can be cast while moving. Then you have 22 to 32% attack speed after casting a defensive skill. Uh, damage reduction for each act of Ball Lightning, 1 to 2 ranks of Ball Lightning, and then um, a chance for Ball Lightning to cast twice. Ball Lightning orbits you, creating a static field that damages all enemies within for 180% of Ball Lightning's damage per active ball, and granting unhindered while the field is active. So... Damage-wise, I think the other ball is better, by the way. But it doesn't have an inherent way for ball lightning to rotate around you, so you would have to still use gravitational. Whereas with this one, we don't have to use gravitational, so we went with this one. Um, yeah. Um, aspect of Shredding Blades. We have Intelligence, Conjuration, Mastery, Glass Cannon, Unstable Currents, Cooldown Reduction, and Shock Critical Strike Damage. Tall Rasha's Ring of Starless Skies. Um, and then active ruins. I still don't have the ruins of ritual going on my builds for the PTR because the way that they've changed stuff, I don't 100% understand it still. I try to read it and I try to make sense of it, but I am more of a like, I have to learn by doing something, which is weird because sometimes I usually have an okay time reading, but um, for some reason with this, I just can't grasp it. And it's hard for me to understand some things without actually doing them. Because I have a horrible perception of time. If it's like stand still for 0 0.3 seconds, I'm like, okay. I can't picture how long that feels like, you know? Um, and then, of course, in armor, you would want a topaz. I just didn't put anything there. Um, and then these will be with the occult gems. Um, I haven't actually put mercenaries on here yet. Because I forgot to do something, but it'll just be the same as it always is for here. This just gives you extra damage. Uh, you could also, if you wanted to, go with Sundering Shield if you'd rather have Grant's 15% armor. 
I prefer to have this because this just has the most damage. And then it'll always be Verena, Bloodthirst. Pretty easy, right? You could also, if you want to, because I, we might be maxed out. Depending on your rolls, we might get maxed out on attack speed. In which case, Verena with... Um, maybe it's not Verena. Is it... One of these guys has... Oh, yeah, Ancient Harpoon that is Verena, which will just pull them into you. But we're going to keep it at Bloodthirst for now. And then lastly, to the Paragon board. Starter board, we have Exploit grabbing all the nodes we can. Coming up here, we have Adept in Frigid, uh, Frigid Fate. And we are grabbing the Lucky Hit Chance over here to help with all of our Lucky Hit Chance procs. And then damage reduction up through here. Making sure to grab all of the intelligence nodes. Um, sorry, I was just thinking, like, if I put one point here, could I save a point anywhere? But I don't think so, because I'd have to take these two points out here and then put one here. But it might work to save a point, but I'm not that worried about it. Um, by the way, we still have, we use all the points because we should be importing our builds. So I'll have 300, but take out some of this... Um, some of these like flat damage stuff if you're not quite at 300 yet. Um, grabbing the max life here, grabbing the damage reduction and vulnerable damage over here. Then we come up this way to fundamental release. I can't ever remember the name of this board. So even though we aren't be able to make enemies burning, we do have the hex that will make them burn. So these aren't useless because if the hex hits, they burn, we'll do extra damage to them. Same with the damage reduction from burning. We want to grab all this damage reduction over here. Plus, we do want the critical strike damage either way. Coming through here, just grabbing both sides. Of course, this is damage reduction from vulnerable. This is damage reduction from burning. And then we have tactician in here. And then over this way, we have ceaseless conduit, which we're not grabbing the thing. So since we're not doing damage to burning enemies, it's, this is really horrible. Like, either... Board wise, you want to grab um, conjuration stuff, I guess. If you're running, well, we're only running one conjuration, but I thought about conjuration stuff so you at least get the cooldown effect of it. If we, if I decide to switch over to the um, build that uses chain lightning to make enemies vulnerable, then this board will turn into the one that has when you spend 100 mana, your next cast of chain lightning restores mana and makes enemies vulnerable for two seconds. But for now, we're not running that version of the build. So we're just not grabbing this, and it feels weird. Um, but in here, we have Destruction. Grabbing all of our Dexterity nodes. This board does have the most Dex nodes, by the way. Um, for some reason, it just goes above and beyond for Dexterity compared to the next best thing. Um, grabbing Critical Strike Dance, the Damage Reduction and Resistance to All Elements, the Max Life and Armor over here. Um, you don't need this Crackling Energy Damage, so just ignore that. And this lightning damage over here, which don't ignore that. And then the last board is Elementalist on it. And it's Enchantment Master. And to be honest, even this isn't too important. It'll just make your enemies chill a little faster, pretty much. Um, and we have Element... I already went over this. We have Elementalist in this. Making sure to grab pretty much all the blue nodes. And yeah, that is it. This is my little build for Ball Lightning uh, for the PTR. Obviously, it's not going to be the best. There's going to be some... Even if Ball Lightning ends up being the, one of the best builds, something will change that I don't know of. There'll be some bug because it's Blizzard. But uh, for now, this is the one I'm going to rock with. And if anything changes as I play it, if I play it, because obviously I can't play all six builds during the PTR. There's only seven days. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all the generic YouTube stuff. And I will catch you guys in the next one.